Good morning, Beaver Dam. This is Pastor Owen coming to you live from Beaver Dam and Rousey's Chapel, and you are joining us for our time of reflections. This is the time where we gather Monday through Thursday to read some scripture together, to uh, pray over the scripture, and then uh, to hear some reflections and read some some notes and commentary uh, kind of things. Uh, and I am happy that you are joining us this morning. If you're joining us live or throughout today, please drop us a line uh, in the comment box. It's a great way that we can stay connected as the church body. And it's also a great place to, to put your comments and uh, your feelings on the particular text for the day. So uh, we have been using the revised Common Lectionary Weekly Readings as the basis for our, our time together. And uh, today we have uh, our Psalm 90 that we read yesterday. We read the same Psalm each morning. And then we have a little piece from the prophet Amos. So uh, let's go ahead and delve into some scripture, shall we? Uh, Psalm 90, verses 12 through 17. And uh, this morning I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Uh, good morning, Loretta. Glad to see you're joining us. So uh, let's delve into the text here. Psalm 90, verses 12 through 17. So teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Turn, O Lord, how long? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love so that we may rejoice and be glad in all of our days. Make us glad as many days as you have afflicted us and make and as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be manifested to your servants and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and prosper for us the work of our hands. Oh, prosper the work of our hands. Well, good morning, Karen. And then our next reading this morning comes from the book of Amos, chapter 5, verses 6 through 7. Then we'll jump over to verses 10 through 15. And uh, I'm reading from the Common English Bible this morning. Seek the Lord and live or else God might rush like a fire against the house of Joseph. The fire will burn up Bethel with no one to put it out. Doom to you who turn justice into poison and throw righteousness to the ground. They hate the one who judges at the city gate and they reject the one who speaks the truth. Truly, because you crush the weak, and because you tax their grain, you have built houses of carved stone, but you won't live in them. You have planted pheasants, you have planted pleasant vineyards, but you won't drink their wine. I know how many are you, I know how many are your crimes, and how numerous are your sins, afflicting the righteous, taking money on the side turning away the poor who seek help. Therefore, the one who is wise will keep silent in that time. It is an evil time. Seek good and not evil that you may live so that the Lord, the God of heavenly forces will be with you just as you have said, hate evil, love good, and establish justice at the city gate. Perhaps the Lord of heavenly forces will be gracious to what is left of Joseph. So, uh, interesting scripture this morning. So uh, let's take a, a few minutes to prayerfully reflect upon the scriptures. And as we do, uh, I'll keep us, uh, try to keep us a little focused with the line from the psalm this morning. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love.
satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, we have been using the our Wesley Study Bible for our notes. And uh, the ones for this particular chapter of uh, Amos uh, read this way. Israel's death is inevitable. Uh, Amos announces the future of the virgin Israel. Israel's demise is evident in diminished troops. There is hope if Israel will seek the Lord and live and not seek Bethel or the other sanctuaries that are doomed to judgment. Uh, a hemonic portrayal of the creator's awe-inspiring power for judgment is found in verses 8 and 9. In verses 10 through 15, court trials in the gate complex, a room inside the thick city walls, are corrupt. Israel violates covenant justice by rejecting the truth, crushing the weak, taxing their grain, and afflicting the righteous, taking money on the side and turning away from the poor. Therefore, covenant curses will overtake them. If Israel will seek and love good rather than evil, they will experience God's redeeming presence, and God may be gracious to what is left of Joseph. So here we go. Interesting notes this morning. Hmm. You know, I uh, as part of our uh, part of the time that I spend prepping for our time together is I read several different uh, study notes in, in various Bibles that I have. And the one that uh, really spoke uh, this morning to me was some notes that are in my Life Application Bible. And uh, I wanted to delve into those for just a bit. So this is a note for verse 1, which is a verse that we did not read this morning. Amos shocked his listeners by singing a lament or song of grief for them as though they had already been destroyed. The Israelites believe that their wealth and religious ritual made them secure, but Amos lamented their, their sure destruction. I thought that was kind of interesting. And then uh, when we jump over to... Um, when we jump over to verses 6, 
uh, there's this note. There is one sure remedy for the world that is sick and dying in sin. Seek the Lord and live. Sin seeks to destroy, but hope is found in seeking God. In times of difficulty, seek God. In personal discomfort and struggle, seek God. When others are struggling, encourage them to seek God too. You know, it really spoke to me in the ways that... Uh, when we, do, uh, when we do find ourselves in those times of struggle and when we know people who are struggling, that uh, some of the best advice that we can give them is to seek God. But it also reminds me that we need to be walking next to those who are also struggling and help them seek God together because I think that's what it really means to live in Christian community. And let's see, let's jump back. Um, Here's, here's a note that I, I think poses some really good questions for us to ponder during the day. Why does God put so much emphasis on the way we treat the poor and needy? How we treat the rich or those of equal standing often reflects what we hope to get from them. But because the poor can, can give us nothing, we treat the, how we treat them reflects our true character. Do we, like Christ, give without the thought of gain? We should treat the poor as we would like God to treat us. Whew, there's some truth in those notes, isn't it? About the, should we, do we treat the poor the way that we want God to treat us? That's a great reflection question for today. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And let's see. Um, and then the last one. Yeah, this is for verse, verse 15. If Israel were to sweep away the corrupt system of false accusations, bribery, and corruption, and were to insist that only just decisions be given, this would show their change of heart. We dare not read this passage 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 lightly or write it off as simply as encouragement to do good. It is a command to reform our own legal and social systems. Well, friends, those were some good notes and I believe they pose some challenging questions for us uh, to reflect upon and to ponder during this, uh, this Tuesday. So uh, I invite you to spend some time and go back to that scripture and read it again and see how God is speaking to you in the text this morning. Uh, but for now, let's get ready to take on the day. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of the blessings that you pour out upon us each and every day. God, you're an awesome God, and we know that there are many times when we fall short, when we fall short in treating um, those around us not with the same love and care that you've shown us. God, let us see the error of our ways and let us take steps to repent and to change our ways and to treat others the way you want them treated, the way that we want to be treated by you. God, we ask that you be with all of those who are just not feeling well this morning, who are suffering, who might be facing challenges that seem so overwhelming. God, just wrap them in your loving arms. Let them know that you're near and help us and guide us to walk with them through the troubles that they're facing. God, we ask for all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, remember that this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Go in peace. Bye for now.